Hello, I'm Chris, and this is my 22 and a half inch semi conversion video, part two. So, this video is not going to be as long as part one, but part one is very necessary to understand if you want this project to work out and save as much money as possible. So, this is the cabin chassis 14 bolt at 63 and a half inches wide, and the goal in this project is to run two eight and a quarters and have them tuck inside the fenders. We'll get them on here in a little bit. So, the wheel adapters finally came in. We need to test fit everything. Some people will say that cabin chassis 14 bolt will hit the spring. We're about to find out. Let's go ahead and look at those adapters and get them on here and let's see what happens. So I had to put the bedside on there to fit the wheels as well. I have a video where I made the mini tub video coming very short where we're going to actually mini tub that side. This side didn't come out so great. Not an easy project, but stay tuned. One of the most important parts of this conversion is knowing your hub diameter. You don't measure it from right here. If you look back right there it's got those two grooves because it has two wheels that ride on those grooves it can be very difficult to get a measurement on this so you're gonna have to go on the internet and this one is a 4.56 inch so it's getting dark out here but I want you to take a real good look at those double grooves right there we're gonna come back to those in a second here so spending $870 on some parts that have to be perfect it can be a bit frustrating when you're waiting on these in the mail it takes three to four weeks for them to make them, and that's exactly how long it took to get them. So these adapters weigh 35 pounds a piece, 70 pounds a box, so be careful. So there is front ones and rear ones. We're only worried about the rear right now. So it's got some red thread locker in the box. The first thing you're going to notice is how big they are. This is a 16-ounce can. Looks pretty small in there. So they're going to come banded. And these are 35 pounds a piece and they can have sharp edges. So you be very careful when you take these out of the box. So these are bare steel and they will rust like crazy. We're gonna give them a paint job in part three. So you're gonna to have to have an impact and a 33 millimeter socket. This was $20. So an important thing to note and realize that this is gonna space your wheels as well. So that's 5H right there, but that doesn't matter. It's going to space your wheels out 13 sixteenths from the wheel mounting surface. It's one and a quarter inch overall, but only one inch and a sixteenth are actually going to pilot your wheels. We have one and a sixteenth inch. Now, I want you to look at these spacers right here. If I could go back in time, I would buy those types of wheel adapters because some of them appear to have more space right here. In other words, if you needed to space your wheels out, as long as they're riding on the hub, you could go a lot further. These, that is the minimum right there. These are gonna work, hopefully. But just remember that, pay attention to that. Call them and find out how long that lip is. I've seen some that are way out here. Think about that. Another thing to note, these studs are pressed in, so they'll run the nuts down to press them in. So these studs can sometimes be a little bit crooked. All you gotta do, run the nut up and just bonk it one way or the other. I'm pretty sure they test them before they ship them out, but don't be freaked out if you see one of them studs looking a little crooked. We are working out here at night. I apologize, I have a day job. So we looked at that 4.56 double lip right there earlier because it's dark now, we can't see it. First thing you need to do, put your adapter on there and make sure that it seats itself and it's not loose up and down. You might want to wire brush it off real good. I did lightly sandblast it earlier. Okay. So let's talk about something else that's very important. These adapters were cut for these hubs at 4.5, six inches, so they ride on the hubs. So a lot of people don't pay attention to that because the factory lug nuts do have a bevel on them. See how the adapters have that little bevel and when we tighten them down, it's gonna become lug centric. So if you ignore this, it should work and those lug nuts should center it. But the way that this is designed, it's not supposed to be like that. Okay, so when you're officially putting them on there, you do want to use a thread locker. We'll do that in part three. So to put the size of these in perspective, this is your 13 16 three quarter ton, one ton lug nut.
So all we did right there is we were making sure the wheel was bottomed out. Now that one in the 16th inch, you see all the lip it's given us for the second wheel to ride on that hub right there, only like a quarter inch. So that's why I was talking about getting the adapters that are longer right here, because we actually need to space these out and we can't do it right here at all. So somewhere in a forum or something I read, they were talking about the cabin chassis rear end will actually hit or touch the spring with the tire and it clearly looks like it is or will. So we need to space that somehow. Do this at your own risk. That's the part number right here. These are a quarter inch. But before you freak out in the comments, let me get this off and we'll take a closer look at what we're doing. Oh God dang it. All right, so remember those two lips. Since they run two wheels in the back, this actually sticks out pretty far. Let's check it out. So that second groove sits at half an inch. So if we want to space this a quarter, it's not going to hurt anything. So these were like $32 at O'Reilly. Okay. So if we run that clearly, we have that second groove completely exposed. And if anything happens, vibration or anything weird, I promise you, I will talk about it in a video and let everybody know. So after just one wheel, I am officially terrified and would never try to fight anybody that does tire repair on these big rig trucks. This stuff is super heavy. It's literally a freaking workout. So that quarter inch made a big difference. Now the tires are 10 and a half inches wide. And if they rub at all, I am just going to get a grinder and grind them springs back. So let's get that other wheel on there and see how well these tuck. Let's get that dually fender on there. Okay, so it's actually about two or three inches tucked in there. So it's gonna have a very cool custom look to it. That cabin chassis rear end may be for you, may not, but we have successfully fit two eight and a quarter inch, 22 and a half, and made them tuck a whole bunch. And notice that perfect four inch gap right there. We got to fix episode three coming soon it's november 25th 2020 and it's already dark the guy just called me and he said he's got his machine set up and he's cutting 22s right now so we need to take these off and let's head over to that shop so i'm back home now there was supposed to be somebody there and there was not it is a holiday weekend so i'm not that mad and the place is just five minutes away well you'll see a mill and we'll get tires and get them all on the truck and everything in part three if you enjoyed the video please like and subscribe Thanks for watching.